The State Historical Society of Missouri has been seriously seeking new quarters for more than a decade now. The Society has been housed in Ellis Library on the University of Missouri campus since the building was built in about 1915 and is now experiencing major growing pains. The Society and Western Manuscripts currently occupy approximately 33,000 square feet of space in Ellis Library. We think we need uh, four to five times that amount of space. One of the, uh, the big challenges we face, for example, is displaying our world-class art collection. We estimate that at any given time, we can display less than one half of 1% of what we hold. And these are, are really incredible uh, pieces of art. Well, the primary challenge is, of course, space, because we have a huge collection, over 12,000 objects, and very little space to display it. We have over 40 works by George Caleb Bingham, for example, and we're here in the George Caleb Bingham room, and only 10 works are on display. We try to constantly have order number 11, watching the cargo, the really famous works on display, but we don't have Thomas Jefferson, our portrait of Thomas Jefferson on display. We don't have his drawings. We don't have the prints that we have in the collection, the uh, steel engraving plate, all those things that make our collection of George Caleb Bingham work special we, don't, we can't show the public all of those things, which is really upsetting. Same with Thomas Hart Benton. We have over 10 large paintings dealing with World War II by Thomas Hart Benton, and again, only five of them are on display right now. We also have over 200 drawings of, uh, of Benton's in our collection and over 100 lithographs. Again, we can only display those in contemporary shows. People really are not getting to see the wealth of our collection in these great artists, Bingham and Benton. Joan gave us a short tour of the galleries, highlighting some notable pieces in the collection. George Caleb Bingham, he lived here in central Missouri and he really made his living doing uh, portraits and we have a number of them here at the Society. Here's some really uh, nice examples here on display. But what he's famous for now as a great American artist is his genre paintings, his paintings of people, everyday people in Missouri who were living and working on the river. And uh, it shows people working on the river. These are the men who have been hired to watch the cargo after a steamboat wreck. So if you look closely, you can see the steamboat uh, in the background. The Missouri River was very treacherous in the 19th century. This painting was painted in 1849. This artwork in particular is uh, quite interesting. This uh, documents an event that happened during the Civil War, Order Number 11, when martial law was instituted in those border counties between Kansas and Missouri. And Bingham felt it was very important to express his uh, outrage over this incident in this painting. He really wanted people around the country to know about it. We have a collection of 10 war paintings that were made by Thomas Hart Benton in 1942, just after Pearl Harbor. He was very upset with what happened at Pearl Harbor. So he very quickly painted a, a series of images, and some of them are very disturbing, uh, for the government to use as propaganda. This is called Embarkation, and it represents soldiers getting ready to go off to battle in World War II. But it was a little bit controversial at the time because the soldiers don't look gung-ho. They don't look thrilled to be going off to war. They're going because they have to, they know it's necessary, but there's a, a sense of sadness, especially in this one man's face who seems to be looking back, thinking of home, thinking of the people he's leaving as he goes off to fight. Seth Smith manages an enormous newspaper collection dating as far back as the 1800s. But his department is also faced with space and preservation challenges. We're facing some real storage issues, um, storage issues with our microfilm, as well as with our old hard copy newspapers uh, that we're preparing to be filmed. Um, our back shelves are just stacked with these old papers. Some of them are you know, priceless documents from the 19th century and there's not a, a, a really good storage mechanism for those anymore. So for these hard copies, we need pretty much twice as much space. 
we get a lot of microfilm in each week and sorting through that film, there's no good storage area or, or, or place to do that. So a, a lot of the, the sorting has to go on at our desks where Preferably, that would be a space for, for folks who are you know, looking at census materials. And so it's been difficult, uh, especially since there are a lot of dual uses we've had to engage in, especially for microfilm storage. Our microfilm reading area is also our microfilm storage area. So it makes it complicated when people are actually searching for microfilm and it's very dark for the folks who actually need to read the microfilm uh, on the microfilm readers. So yeah, we could use two or three times as much space in our department right now. And then there's the reference library, where genealogists come from all over the country to conduct family and community research. We have a large collection, but we're constantly having to sh shift that collection because we don't have enough space out here. <laughs> you know, and it, that doesn't make it you know, very much fun for patrons, especially since we have older patrons that have to get all the way down on the ground, or, you know, we have seven, I think we have seven foot shelves, having them to get all the way up and have to use um, ladders and stuff like that. That's not fun either for anybody. If I had my druthers, we would have one big research room that included newspaper with us as well, because right now with us being split, obviously that's the other thing is that genealogists have to go between the two. Um, you know, I mean, you have to stop, you have to walk out of that library, walk down the hallway, walk to our library, find what you're looking for, stuff like that. So we'd have one big research room where we'd have an open collection. A lot of our collection would be open, not the entire thing, because we do have a lot of books that are rare and stuff like that. But um, it would be open to the genealogists and everything like that. They could do microfilm research. They could do, you know, they could look up their cemeteries, everything they need to look up. You know, if, if they find their cemetery, the cemetery they're looking for, they find the person, then they can go right away and look up the obituary. It's not a whole process of having to walk back down the hallway and, you know, the whole thing. So, yeah, one big research room would be wonderful. And one access point for people so that people don't, you know, we, we have to tell people, you know, if you're going to newspaper, you got to put your stuff. If you're going to reference, you got to put your stuff up. It'd be much easier if we had one access point to tell people one thing, one time. <laughs> Holdings of the Western Historical Manuscript Collection, also housed in Ellis Library, are extensive and diverse. The collection comprises more than 17,000 linear feet of documents, 6,400 rolls of microfilm, 31,000 images, and 15,000 hours of audio and video recordings. This is an astronomy notebook uh, prepared by a gentleman named Patterson for the American Philosophical Society in um, Philadelphia. He created this astronomy notebook um, for the Lewis and Clark expedition so they could figure out where they were longitudinally and latitudinally speaking. Uh, but basically it's a set of, uh, of uh, mathematical formulas to, to figure out where they were traveling. And so this actual piece uh, went with the expedition. It's one of the only pieces we have here in the collection that actually traveled with the expedition. Uh, our holdings, uh, you know, start from the early territorial period, Missouri territorial period, all the way up to almost present. Our collections range from that that distance. So um, what we are basically is a primary source repository. We collect primary sources, basically the raw materials that historians use to interpret history. These are letters, diaries, photographs, scrapbooks, all these kind of documents that were created in the past. Um, and a primary source is that document created uh, from that time period. So if you're studying the Civil War, letters written during the Civil War, those are primary sources. And uh, our collection is really quite wide ranging. As we are now, um, the reading room for um, the reference materials and the newspaper materials, and us over here, they're all integrated. I mean, it's all Missouri history. And it's unfortunate that if a researcher comes in, wants to look at newspaper microfilm, um, and if they want to come over here and, and do some research in manuscripts, they actually have to go outside the building and come over here. So we've thought about those ideas too, and in a new facility we'd like to have a more shared reading room area where um, we still have to maintain some security for some of the rare materials that we have over here, but it would be like across the hallway where they wouldn't have to go outside the building, and there would be a lot more integration, I think, between the, the different types of materials that we house here and, and make available. In just six years, the Society will celebrate its 100th anniversary. 
the masterpieces of Bingham and Benton, the priceless papers of Lewis and Clark, and the jewels of our own family histories, hopefully will be in new quarters right here in Columbia, Missouri. We hope to locate a new building for the State Historical Society um, so that it is accessible to students of the University of Missouri Columbia campus and faculty members. Uh, we envision classroom space, at least two classrooms in that building so that students could, could take classes. But we also want it accessible to uh, people who might be coming in off of Interstate 70 and uh, who are, are tourists who want to see some of the artwork that we hold to researchers who uh, might want to come in and do family and community history, but also to groups. We're talking about a building uh, in the neighborhood of 150,000 square feet of space. We're talking about a building somewhat larger than the uh, library, the public library in Columbia. We need a full city block and um, there are not very many full city blocks uh, in close proximity to the university. I discovered the State Historical Society of Missouri as an undergraduate student in the 1960s and I've been coming here to do research for more than 40 years. Uh, I think I ended up as the executive director because I hung around all the time and they just thought they ought to put me to work. It is a place of endless interest. I still, after more than 40 years, come into this facility and discover new documents, new materials, new letters, new ways of looking at my home state. And I would invite uh, the residents of Columbia and indeed the residents of Missouri to come to the State Historical Society of Missouri and to explore with me the richness of this state's heritage.